Former Trump campaign frontman Steve Bannon is accusing the FBI of raiding Trump supporters as a political tactic. Now, he hasn't said exactly who these people are, so what the heck is going on here? Uh, Let's let him say it on conservative forum, The Charlie Kirk Show. Listen. They just reported a couple names. There were 35 senior members of MAGA, uh, Republicans, supporters of Donald Trump uh, that were, you know, the FBI rolled in on. Right. When they didn't need to do it. Remember, all these people have lawyers. All their lawyers are very well known. No, the jackbooted Gestapo has got to show up at their door and uh, and make a big display of this. So there's so much going on that people don't even know at so many levels. Um, Steve, can you reiterate that? You said there are 35 FBI raids yesterday. I consider myself well read. I didn't see that anywhere. Can can you elaborate on that? I've been reported. I'm breaking that news right here. There, if you go to the Washington Post story, 35 FBI went to 35 years. All these people have lawyers. They all know who the lawyers are. Uh, they didn't want. They didn't serve uh, these subpoenas to the lawyers. They want to make a big display of it. They want to take a bunch of their devices. They want. This is the FBI trying to roll in and trying to be muscle. All right. Now, this was last Friday, the same day that he was arraigned on charges of fraud around raising money to support the Trump campaign around election fraud. Right. He calls this a way that the Justice Department is now turning up the heat on enemies of President Biden. Now, a lawyer for some of these 35 people, by some media reports, it's upwards of 50 people. I see people in the chat saying, yeah, now it's 50 people right. being rounded up. Um, so a lawyer, her name is Dylan. She confirmed this on Tucker Carlson later that this day. Uh, listen. What is the truth? Well, the truth is that a few days ago, a political reporter called several people and said, hey, have you heard or have you been served yet? The FBI is going to be serving 50 approximately search warrants and or subpoenas on Trump supporters. And then, you know, within 24 hours of that, two of our clients, three of our clients actually did either get search warrants or subpoenas. And these subpoenas are extremely broad. They're from the Capitol siege section of the United States uh, Department of Justice's uh, D.C. office, and they ask for broad categories of documents. They ask for all communications dating from a month before the election until a month, two months after the election, and they ask for all communications regarding uh, do- dozens of people, and the categories are alternate electors, uh, fundraising around irregularities around the election, and also a, a, a rally that happened before the January 6th uh, situation at the Capitol. So the Save America rally that happened. And so basically most of this pro- activity, if not all of it, is protected by the First Amendment. And the United States Department of Justice is telling reporters about these search warrants and subpoenas before they're executed. There's no other explanation for this. And I think the reason for this is to instill fear into Donald Trump supporters and into those who would challenge election irregularities right before an upcoming election, Tucker. So this is really outrageous abuse by the DOJ, and it is illegal for the DOJ to leak this information to the media, Tucker. All right, so what the heck is this about, right? It's crazy. Given that we we don't really know the names of who was raided or who was subpoenaed, so we can't draw connections other than the things, the themes that she tells us. So... Um, Have you fundraised around the legitimacy of the election, right? Um, Have have you participated in any riots or demonstrations around the the legitimacy of the election? Have you communicated with anybody around January 6th, right? We know that only one of her clients is called Women for America First, and they were among this group that was How, targeted. But she's right there. How is this not protected under the First Amendment? Like, if you've had conversations with people and you fun, you know, you you believe that whatever. We're not going to say it on this channel because I know YouTube will take us down, right? But the legitimacy of election, right? If yeah. you've talked about it, or if you've had conversations about it, and you've had support groups about it, or you've fundraised about it, like they're coming to your house. But look, Bannon was charged was indicted with something around illegal fundraising what they're calling illegal fundraising around the election right Right. and so if you can pin anything to him right you were fundraising around this notion and the way that it's not that he wasn't allowed to do it you can fundraise on a, a political belief 
it was what they're saying has to do with what he how he actually funneled the money indirectly to himself right, right? that's right. those are the allegations so you can look at you can look at those things but i think what's interesting right is that Earlier this year, Attorney General Merrick Garland warned that we would start to see more movement on people who were connected with January 6th soon. So now, is that happening because the Justice Department has just like the wheels of justice turned slow and they're trying to get it right? Or here's my more cynical question. Is it because an election is coming up? Right. Right. That is the question. We shouldn't jump to conclusions, but we should ask this question. Right. It's hard to say. This is something that conservatives obviously could use to feed their already inflamed attitude about the FBI. Right. So is this then just another reason? So I'm, I'm looking at the extreme cases. Right. Are conservatives using this to rile up their base against the FBI or or and or Mm -hmm. are Democrats weaponizing this event, but they took two years to do it because they've got an election, right? Right. And so I don't think that this is necessarily another reason to be upset with the FBI. Um, You know, just a few weeks ago, former Attorney General Bill Barr went on Barry Weiss' podcast, Honestly, and he explained that the FBI actually doesn't make these decisions about raiding politicians. They're kind of like the hired gun, right? It's the Justice Department that does this. So this is what he said about the raid on President Trump's house. Listen to what he said. Well, the first thing is, I think a lot of the attacks on the FBI are over the top because a decision like this is not going to be made by the FBI. And in fact, I don't think the FBI would come and pound the table pushing a decision like this. In this kind of situation, the decision that it's best to go in and search and obtain those documents after being jerked around for a year and a half, and that's the way the department would look at it, would be made at the Department of Justice by subordinates of the AG and ultimately signed off on by the AG. And the FBI would be told to go and execute it. So all this idea that the FBI is the problem here, I, I think, are mis- you know, it's misplaced. That's number one. Okay. I am not pro Trump. I am not pro anything, right? So stop it in the chat. I'm Ken, not Kenneth saying is like, yeah. but she's a never Trumper. And other people are like, not. she's pro Trump. I love I'm the, not pro Trump. I'm not uh, pro Democrat. I'm I asking also saw that questions. You're a sheep. Oh, yes. You're and I'm a sheep. sheep. You're, yeah. yeah you're, so I know it, stop it's so being so funny. pro Trump. <laughs> We're asking important questions, right? No matter what you want the outcome to be, we have to ask these questions. So. Bill Barr goes on to say that really this is the Justice Department, right? It's not the FBI that's deciding to go and raid people. The Justice Department is. Mm -hmm. That may not make us feel any better, right? Because he's saying... What? Did you... No, he was oh, playing this. Because no, he's, I, I, thought you were, I thought you were throwing the video. Oh, okay. Well, hang on one second. He's saying that some people inside the Justice Department are actually politically motivated, and they decide to, like, really? let's go, you know, like, <laughs> Thanks, we Captain feel Obvious. about this. In fact, he said, you know, Mueller got his investigation so wrong because he hired politically motivated investigators that Mueller himself may not have been, but almost all of the people working on it, which I think he's right about. Now... He doesn't think Christopher Wray, the acting FBI director, is uh, one of those people who's politically motivated, but it almost doesn't matter if there are politically political motivations in the Justice Department, right? So he's saying some people are, some people are not. Wait a minute, it doesn't matter if there's political motivations in the Justice Department? I because, think, because what he's me, saying is that the FBI is just the hired gun, right? Oh, I see. It's the Justice Department that, that starts it. That's deciding we're going to investigate this, right? And the, the FBI makes their investigations. Well, I think it's incredibly sure. ignorant for him to say that it's not important because... Uh, you know, because it, it, we saw there was people fired from the FBI recently because yes. of their political rants about Trump, yes. right? So why did they fire them then if it wasn't important? You're right. And why didn't Barry Weiss follow up Bill Barr with that question? She does. She said this is incredibly unsatisfying answer because you're saying, hmm. yeah, there are some politically motivated you know, investigations going on, but some of them actually are just trying to do their job and do it right. And she's like, that sucks. Like, how do we know what to believe? How can we not say we don't believe this, right? But what's, uh, and what's undeniable is that these things are happening and are shifting the advantage to the Democrats. Listen to him say that. The main reason I'm sort of irritated at the whole episode is because it actually strengthens 
Biden and hurts the Republican Party going into the midterms. I think one of the reasons people sort of sense a little bit of loss of momentum, we'll all see how it turns out, but is because the focus has once again returned to President Trump and his persona and his modus operandi instead of the pocketbook issues that had been the focus before. Right. So Democrats love it, right? Because Trump is so easy to rally on opposition for. They can rally their base, not based on what are the actual issues, which are inflation, um, global politics, uh, gas, energy, you know, all of these things. Um, But instead, no, it doesn't matter. Right. We got another Trump thing to hate. So let's all get to the point, to the polls. Right. We can't answer even though there's this. So then it seeks it. Then it then it literally does fall. I mean, it it falls in line with what they hope to accomplish. Right. Which is to demonize, demonize President Trump, demonize MAGA supporters just in time. You don't come out in Philadelphia with that crazy red speech last week. Without a purpose, without a reason. It's all politically timed. People are going back to school. People start, we know, people start paying attention to politics after Labor Day. Yeah. Right? This is when people are starting to become more engaged. This is when political campaigns heat up. They spend a bulk of their money right now into the fall ahead of the November election. right? Right. August, it's quiet. It's all calculated. Of course, they're doing this on purpose. Yes. And it is what Barr, before he took the office of attorney general, he was really concerned about this idea of the expansion of the administrative state. Mm -hmm. Right. Listen to how Barry Weiss explains this really terrifying thing that does feel like it's what what's happening right now. In other words, that the muscles and mechanisms of the government were being used, at least in part, by people to carry out a political witch hunt against a president they didn't like. Yep. Right. Yes. M- much of the GOP base believes this. Many conservatives I know believe this and understandably so. And so then they look at a day like the search in Mar-a-Lago and say, this is just further evidence of exactly that. How can you Bill Barr, who have said, you know, Russiagate wasn't real and these investigations and the, that all of it was sort of trumped up and shouldn't have really happened in the first place. Why should we now believe you that this search and the subpoena of Cipollone are justified? I didn't say they were, you know, I haven't reached the conclusion on that until I get the the information I I said. But what happened in Russiagate essentially created the condition where people are going to think the worst. Exactly. Yeah. And not give the FBI or the Justice Department the benefit of the doubt. So what do you say to conservatives? Sorry. So why should we, though, at this point, right, when there's just so much of this expansion of the administrative state? That's exactly what we were warned about in 1994. So this phrase, the capture of the administration, the rise of the administrative state, comes from a 1994 Harvard Law Review article in which Professor Gary Lawson warned that the administrative process of rulemaking, investigation, enforcement, and education adjudication, sorry, violate the Constitution and the rights it guarantees by concentrating legislative, executive, and judicial powers within a single entity, the administrative agency. So he says this is unconstitutional because it violates the principles of limited and separate governmental power. And when it happens, then these administrative agencies turn into political weapons. Well, we've seen this with the IRS, right? We've seen this with the Department of Homeland Security, David, who was it, the post office that has armed agents now? Who else is armed? All of these arms of right. the executive branch, right? The post office is, a, is an executive branch. The IRS, IRS is what I... Yeah, the yeah. IRS. Um, Department of Education. But, but oh, yeah, the Department of Education. arming, you know, with guns, we're talking about weaponizing well even the irs forget the gun part of it for a second right that's scary and that's sensational and that kind of makes headlines but when the irs has eighty-seven thousand agents now that are going to audit and go after poor and middle class americans or as we know as we've talked about this on the show lois lerner um and uh, nicole flax who were in charge of basically going after conservative groups under Obama, targeting conservative groups. Yes, this is true. That the IRS later apologized for and tacitly acknowledged that they were doing this. Like, that's weaponizing these different departments. Right, right? and now we see just information being weaponized, right? right? Like, through social media companies and, and that kind of thing. Of course, right? But I, the thing that, that sort of gives me pause in all of this is... Uh, 
does it help to become inflamed about this and say, this is a witch hunt, it continues to hunt more witches? Or is there a better way, right? Because both sides now are so inflammatory and feeding themselves outrage mm -hmm. that what do we do with that, right? So listen to what he, you know, because this leads to the like, blow it all up conversation that we see on the web, yeah, like tear it all abolish down. the FBI, abolish, you know, the Supreme Court about like, and so when we go that route, then what are we left with? Is there really anyone's going to be like, great, we have no country. Let's build from the bottom up. Tink, 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 right? Like, right. We're not going to do that. We have to somehow live with what we've got. Um, listen to what attorney Bill, uh, former AG Bill Barr says about that. Well, what's the alternative? My, my message to all these people, you know, something I'm pretty tired of from, from the right is the constant pandering to outrage and frustrate people's frustrations and picking and picking and picking at that sore without trying to channel those feelings in a, in a constructive direction. In my opinion, Ronald Reagan was a great populist, not because he followed you know, the frustrated instincts and the outrage of the people that many people who supported him, but because he channeled it. So right now we are living on this steady diet of outrage. And so I, I think about this all the time when we plan out this show, like there, does it help to just make people mad without any kind of, I don't know. Antidote. It, yeah. yeah. Or um, empowered piece of it or anything like that. Like if we just, sure, we could build a really like, hornet's nest type of audience on youtube and a lot of people have a lot of success doing that right but does it help to just be a hornet's nest um and you know i was thinking about a piece i read the, today about the royal family and of course there's this conversation on the internet and elsewhere about do we even need a monarchy right is there is this just all a charade what's this all worth but there is this sort of collective good in having a piece of your society that is completely nonpartisan. That is unarguably a good thing. Does it have to be represented by a person? I don't know. Could it be maybe be represented by a plush bear or a national Paddington? food? Yes, this is where I was going to. Like a sandwich? I don't know. I don't know if it has to be a human because there is sort of this like, Kate Middleton is better than me because, you know, I don't know. She married that guy and I married this guy. Um, although I think I got the better end of that deal. Um, so, you know. So someone in the chat said, she's great. He's okay. No, he's more than okay. <laughs> so the idea is, right, is there is there something that we can just stop completely being outraged about? This story that we started with, maybe not it, right? The story. Is, is there something we stop being outraged about? I mean, or I is there something like this continued inflammation of both sides is very destructive and when we see the administrative state playing into this it's further destructive so then what i don't know right i don't know what well, this neutral it's like, thing can you is take it can you take the united states to marriage counseling you know it's like but, yes that is the question but yeah. but it, but at the end of the day when you literally have two sides that this is what they want because i really believe like the deep state is the problem here. So you can have MAGA, you can have these guys over here on the left, and you can try to find some common ground, and we often can. Yeah. But when you literally have a deep state underneath all of that, that's that's moving you in a direction that you have no control over anyway, Right. then what, you're fighting a losing battle. You know, because yeah. well, you're never I going to, you're never gonna make change when you literally have a massive force working against you. And that's what we have. We have I, a deep I personally state. felt like, yeah, and I personally felt like the the inflation that we're dealing with would would unite us and be a common like we would find a common enemy because we have the same enemy. We just see it as two different things, and it's like I figured like this inflation would get us all together because it's affecting every single one of us, both yeah. sides. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but we disagree on why it's happening. Right. Because right, both sides exactly. of this government, because Republicans and Democrats continue to print money. You know, the old joke is that, oh, well, I'm going to get in there. I'm going to shrink the size of government. I'm Ronald Reagan. I'm going to shrink the size of government. No, you didn't. I'm George Bush. I'm going to shrink the size of government. No, you didn't. You massively expanded it. I'm Bill Clinton. I'm going to shrink the size of government. No, you didn't. You expanded it. 
No, they always pay lip service. No one has shrunk this, the federal government ever. <laughs> so, well, he, like, I mean, Bill, it's not going to happen. Bill Barr goes on to say you need to legitimately, you know, win elections and then make policy changes. That's how we fight, right? I'm not sure I feel that way anymore, but both sides keep fighting with cheap shots, right? So could it be that these are politically motivated, you know, investigations that are inappropriate? Yes, absolutely. That could be the case. Uh, you know, but Republicans do those kind of things too to sort of give themselves PR advantages in the run-up of elections. Well, Republic sure. And Republicans are amazing at gerrymandering districts. And sure, both they're, sides they're, are sort of well, fighting cheap. Republicans are much better at gerrymandering districts. So you literally have like political districts that look like they sh like, like a fish hook. They shouldn't even be like, how, how does a human being live like that? They don't. And so Republicans are much better at that. Yes. And so, you know, at this point, I don't know, like, I really don't know. I just don't want to, like, feed into this. Let's all be outraged and then have nothing to do with that. I don't well, know if I succeeded no, I mean, I think giving if you we any can, other outlet well, for I that energy. We've got to stop fighting each other. That's one thing, right? Stop fighting each other and realize that these, that this deep state hegemony, these forever politicians who are there permanently these you know dr fauci's of the world who are there for 40 years and you know these unelected individuals who just stay in this permanent government state like that's what we need to focus on i mean and how can we as a country come together there's a hundred million people that do not vote right in yeah. the united states a hundred million people do not vote imagine if those people could come together and we could actually lead you know a, a revolution at the voting bolt at, at you know at the at the ballot box yeah um to make a change so well in my personal opinion it's all it's 100 percent money if you could eventually get money out of politics you would not incentivize people to get into office to become wealthy because you have people that know this so they work their butts off to get into it to establish power and to set them themselves up for the rest of their lives if you got rid of super PACs, you made lobbying illegal, you made it illegal for them to trade stocks, their families and everything, and did not let them enrich themselves while they were in office, you would get people that went in for the right reasons. Because I think that everybody that's going into it right now is not going into it for the right reasons to help people. They're going in it to enrich their lives. Yes, that was the whole platform of Lawrence Lessig when he ran for president in 2016. And nobody, it was just a little too complicated. People did not want to pay attention to that. They only want to be riled up with the like two second sound bites. I mean, he has a whole book, which is fabulous, called Republic Lost. You should read it. Uh, but most people won't, right? Because we're too busy with our 140 characters or how many are we allowed now? 280, 280 now, 280 now on Twitter? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, that's the most we can handle. But if we were to actually pay attention, I, I'm lecturing the converted here because if you are I don't know, 56 minutes into a show like this, you are willing to pay attention to the complicated issues. Uh, but maybe tell your friends to yeah. read more, um, read less Twitter, read more books. Yeah, maybe vote for like Ron Paul, you know, like if everyone would have got on board and maybe voted for these people that we could have had a major change. But uh, the problem is these two party systems push these people out.